Hello all, welcome back. In this video we are talking about uh, Blue Apron Holdings. It is a company that is very very cyclical in nature, you can understand this. It's a meal delivery service that uh, tends to provide people with um, sort of like a box of ingredients that they can use to pretty much build their own uh, meal. Pretty much cook it from scratch and uh, eat it and uh, feel awesome, hopefully. <laughs> so. Blue Apron is a company that has fallen about 63% as you will see from last year and currently I'm seeing that there is a little bit of a trend going on. Uh, today it's up 6.7%. Uh, it's been talked a lot uh, recently and you can see this uh, uptrend over here. It is actually enjoying a little bit of an uptrend right now. But if you take a look at the three year chart, you will notice a company that has been, uh, fallen, uh, that has been falling for many many months now, if not years really, and if you take it to the max, uh, you will see the max chart that uh, it has never reached basically its IPO days. It's actually much much uh, lower now. Of course people who bought here, they are obviously not, uh, not feeling great, but uh, as a buyer here, does it make any sense to buy this company is the question that we're going to ask and uh, try to, <laughs> to reply to that. It's actually almost a $5 stock right now. If we take a look at the financials of this company, you will see that their P ratio is negative and the price to free cash flow is also negative. This is indicating that the company is not profitable. And that's something that we obviously don't like to see because when you have a non-profitable company, a company that doesn't really make money, how much do you, are you willing to spend for this company? It's a very tough uh, question to answer. And uh, for the most part, in many situations, the price that you should be willing to pay should be very, very low. And um, in many situations, none at all. Because a company that doesn't make money, what kind of investment is this? Like uh, when you're investing in something, you are aiming to get your money back uh, soon, hopefully. And in this situation, you are investing in a company that is not profit, is not uh, profitable yet. And um, you don't have a close horizon in the, in the, for the year that it's going to be reaching profitability. And if you take a look at the price to free cash flow here, you will see, for instance, that it has dropped significantly in 2020. You, you would have expected if you bought back in 2019 that you, you may have you know, increased that and uh, get, uh, you may have gotten yourself in positive territory. Yet, um, two years later, we are still at the same spot better than 2020, but still pretty much at the same spot, minus three here, losing money. And the company has been also diluting investors uh, insanely. I mean, it started with about, uh, what was it, 8 million shares, and now we're sitting at almost 33. It's an insane amount of extra shares that have been diluting you as a shareholder. And that's one of the reasons why the stock price has been going down. Of course, not the only one, but it, it definitely helps uh, with that. Now, of course, again, the total liabilities to free cash flow is going to be negative because we don't have free cash flow, it's in the negative. And the revenue of the company has also been in negative territory. And uh, that's uh, the other very, very worrying thing to see here. The company hasn't been increasing its revenue and um, it has fallen down quite a lot, actually, in the pandemic years. Now, will that increase? Uh, I have my doubts because uh, if we're entering a recessionary environment, if we're entering a um, a high interest rate environment, people are probably want, will probably want to actually keep their cash and not uh, use this kind of uh, meal delivery solutions, which can be a little bit expensive. But uh, overall, we want to see what the company is doing financially in our fin financial statements here, and we will see the finer details there. But you, it's worth noting that the revenue hasn't been growing, and even though net income and free cash flow has been growing, it doesn't seem to be coming off of revenue, really. And total equity is also going down uh, from the company, even though they are spending, a, they're actually uh, issuing a lot of shares, which is uh, interesting to see. This probably means that they are getting tons of debt here. And uh, if you take a look at uh, the margins that the company have, uh, has, it's in the negative because they're not making money and the returns are also in the negative. Now let's take a look at the financial statements. Uh, you will see here that they used to make more in terms of revenue back in 2017. That's not an, a pretty sight to see. Because if you're buying a, a negative company in terms of uh, what they're doing in net income or uh, free cash flow, they should at least be growing their revenue. It's not happening here. It's actually about half of what they were making in 2017. I hate to see that personal as a potential investor in this company. And net income has been a little bit better, but still in the negative uh, all red here. Now, if we take a look at the balance sheet uh, of the company, you will notice that the total assets have been at about the same place, although less than what they used to be. 
and uh, if we take a look at the the total debt that the company has it's um, it's you know they have been getting some debt but then they have been paying some back uh, some they have been paying some uh, off but then overall they are sitting at 65 million which is uh, double what they have last year but less than the previous years now if you take a look at the total liabilities here it's the current plus the non current liabilities you will see that uh, again they are 151 million about the same what they were last year and um, a little bit less than the previous year so it's not terrible here although the total equity has been going down in terms of the company and this probably has uh, to do as well with the amount of uh, assets that the company has and uh, these uh, are probably going or at least not increasing going down or at least not increasing as much as the liabilities is the thing and this is why we're getting less total equity here now the cash flow statement you can see here that we're looking at negative operating cash flow and uh, of course that's a worrying sign we started with ne negative net income of course and um, just a few capital expenditures here it's a small company and uh, financing activities that are in the positive because the company has been issuing stock is what we already saw they have been issuing tons of stock really this is how they are funding themselves they do have a, just a little bit of cash uh, it seems like their cash reserves are getting depleted though if you compare them to 2017 which was a very good year for them and uh, free cash flow in the negative as well and so if we go to our stock evaluation tool we would have to be super lenient with this company in order to get anything positive here so what kind of revenue growth uh, should we go for like this one hasn't been growing at all it looks like in the past couple of years pandemic has really hit this one and in 2018 and 19 the company has really really fallen off a cliff here and uh, 2018 was not a pandemic year they still fell quite a lot and uh, i'm gonna go let's just go three five and seven here be a little bit uh, aggressive I will have to be aggressive with this company just to see what I'm getting if they enter profitability. Their margins are all negative. They have been, been they have been making mar money. We're going to try in a marginal profitability, 1, 3, and 5. See what we're getting out of this. Now, as you can understand, again, these are very, very aggressive estimates here. They are far from uh, fulfilling themselves in the last five years, in the next five years. But I want to see what we're getting out of this if we take them to our projections tool here. The free cash flow of the company has been negative as well. And uh, what can you go with it? What can you do with this one? I'm just going to use something that's relatively normal here. 80, 90, and 100 basically means uh, 0 0.8 in terms of free cash flow margin compared to revenue. And uh, this is 90% of the 3%, and this is 5% pretty much, 100% of 5. And annual return of 13% is what we're going to go with. Let's hit calculate and see what we're getting out of this one. Now, with these estimates, uh, this could actually be a buy. Now, even uh, even at our uh, medium price, we're still quite quite far. We're actually quite uh, higher than the current price. And so what happens if um, if we lower our uh, medium? Actually, let's do everything. Let's go one, two and three, be a little bit more conservative. Are we still in the green for our medium? Yeah, we are. So our medium is still in the green. Maybe a two percent uh, net income uh, margin will. Yeah, this is where we're getting a little bit of a redness here. It means that um, the company can still definitely continue growing its revenue at a 2% uh, rate. That's uh, not the problem here. The problem is the margins because the margins uh, have been negative, very, very negative in the previous years. And so reaching 2% or 3%, which was our very green value here, um, would, would take some effort. Uh, the company needs to be profitable. Will that happen? It may happen, but it seems to be far from happening anytime soon. You may notice that in 2020 their margins were actually better than 2021. So it doesn't look like it's story, a story that's getting better, at least substantially. You may have, uh, you may see a little bit of a better year next year. Maybe it's back to minus 10, but getting to plus three seems doubtful. So in this case, I would probably just avoid this company completely and uh, maybe potentially wait for it to become uh, positive in terms of uh, their net income. If that happens at some point in the future, then maybe revisit. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you did like this one. And in the meantime, take a look at this video that I made earlier. I'm talking about Upstart, an interesting company, a very, very interesting one, which has fallen down tremendously. And it may be worth a, a, at least an examination. It's more than 90% down. And it's becoming a very, very interesting play, at least in my eyes. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.